Number 8. Colombian Mummy Residents of the small Colombian town of Rosas Calca were horrified at the discovery of a perfectly preserved mummified body that appeared after a landslide in 2019. After massive rainfall caused the landslide, it was made up to the local grave digger, Florentino Torres, to clean up the mess, which meant he had to get his hands dirty, retrieving coffins and bones from the vaults that were damaged during the mudslide. He was also working to prepare new graves for the bodies of other people killed in the new landslide. Along with some local villagers, Torres got to work unearthing bones and giving them to their distraught relatives so that they could have their loved ones reburied. But during the chaos, Torres was shocked to discover something bizarre, the perfectly preserved body of a human with most of its skin and hair intact. Landslides are common in Colombia because the houses are built on steep hillsides, which can become treacherous during the country's rainy season. Even though the discovery was unsettling, mummies aren't uncommon in the San Bernardo area of Colombia, where bodies have been known to become naturally preserved. Wondering how that happens? Some think the local diet of Guatila and Baluk, two indigenous fruits eaten in the region, could play a part. Others think that it's the local climate and altitude that act as a natural embalming agent. And with so many mudslides, it makes sense that some of the bodies trapped underground forever might later be unearthed, only to have been preserved where they lay. If you thought naturally preserved mummies only happen in Colombia, there are also mummies in Guanajuato, Mexico that have become naturally preserved by underground gas and the special chemical composition of the soil. If you want to get a look at the mummies, there's a mausoleum set up at the local cemetery, with biographies written on postcards by the victims' families to remember them. It might seem a cop, but in a way, it's allowing the memory of the deceased to live on. Number 7. Cave of Horror in a remote cave in Israel, a remarkable historical discovery was made in 2021. The problem? It happens to be in the Cave of Horrors, a place known for the previous discovery of a large number of skeletons, mostly belonging to children. The cave was first discovered by archaeologists in 1953 and was later excavated in 1961 by Israeli archaeologists where they unearthed more than 9,000 documents and 50,000 fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls that took decades to fully excavate. The cave is one of eight in the canyon of Nahal Haver, used as a haven during a Jewish revolt against Rome. With an entrance 80 meters below the edge of the canyon, at a drop of hundreds of meters below it, it's extremely difficult to access, which could be the very reason why this new discovery of more scroll fragments has remained hidden for so long. Who do you think left behind these new fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Experts think they might have figured out who hid the scrolls there after locating the remains of the camp at the top of the cliff. Could the refugees who sheltered there use the cave to hide their prized possessions in the cave before dying in a Roman siege? It's up to experts to decide, and the task isn't going to be an easy one. Ever since the first set of scrolls was discovered in 1947, numerous fakes have turned up, including forged documents that ended up in the collection at Washington, D.C.'s Museum of the Bible in 2018. By studying the archaeological evidence surrounding the scrolls, experts can rule out more fakes. And if these new fragments are proved to be original, it's very exciting for archaeologists who hope there are more scrolls out there waiting to be discovered. Number 6. Largest Dinosaur Footprint In the remote western region of Australia, scientists have uncovered what they've nicknamed their very own Jurassic Park. While working in the area, they discovered 21 different types of fossil footprints, including one that's the largest ever on Earth. The stunning find included tracks from long-necked herbivores, two-legged ornithopods, and six different types of tracks from various armored dinosaurs. But the most exciting discovery was of the only known evidence of the Stegosaurus ever found in Australia. Over 130 million years ago, dinosaurs lived in the wet, sandy region of the area's river delta with other races of prehistoric creatures in Western Australia rare due to erosion. Find was a remarkable one. Experts spent 400 hours measuring and examining the prints, making models and silicone casts to display them in museums. Even though it took centuries for paleontologists to find the results, Australia's indigenous people have been sharing stories of mythical creatures they say once roamed the area, including one of Morala, an emu man who left large, three-toed tracks behind. 
these fossils belong to the creatures that inspired this bit of indigenous lore? Seems like it. If it wasn't for the Gularabulu people, who were a group of Aboriginal Australians who alerted scientists to the presence of footprints, this very important part of Earth's evolution might have never been uncovered. Luckily, the area was given national heritage status, which will help to protect these historic tracks and allow curious spectators to view them in their natural habitat. Number 5. Crocodile Mummy it's no secret that ancient Egyptians had some unique burial practices. From mummification to storing the organs of the dead in canopic jars, the culture is a fascinating one. Now, modern technology is helping to shed some light on these mysterious people, and research has revealed secrets that no one ever expected. Tourists to Egypt were often warned about buying mummified animals at Egyptian markets, and after seeing the results of a recent scan done by the National Museum of Antiquities in the Netherlands, you'll understand why. The museum has had a nearly 10-foot crocodile mummy on display since 1828, when the 2,500-year-old mummy was examined using X-rays and CT technology. The scans revealed the mummy was made up of not just one, but two different juvenile crocodile skeletons. Experts weren't necessarily surprised, since stories of fake mummies with bandages wrapped around random bones are often sold to unsuspecting tourists looking for a cool souvenir to take home. What the museum staff didn't expect, though, was to find out the mummy they had wasn't only made up of multiple crocodiles, there were 47 separate baby crocodile skeletons inside the mummy. To make the discovery even more fascinating, each of the baby crocodiles had been mummified before they were packed inside the larger crocodile before it, too, was mummified. If you thought it was a unique find, you'd be partially right. It's actually the second crocodile mummy found to have a secret hidden inside. In 2015, scans of a crocodile mummy at the British Museum in London revealed 20 hatchlings inside the wrappings of the larger croc's back. Instead of hiding the secret crocodile mummies, the National Museum of Antiquities in the Netherlands decided to make it the focus of their exhibit, offering visitors a virtual look inside the mummy so they can see the remarkable way the ancient Egyptians wrapped the creatures. The crocodile was considered the god of water in ancient Egypt, one that symbolized the strength and power of the pharaoh. Sobek was an important figure as an ancient deity depicted as a crocodile god. So one can imagine that when the ancient Egyptians mummified these crocodiles, they were doing so in a way to honor their god. Number 4. Dragon Man If you've ever taken an anthropology class, you probably learned that Neanderthals are the closest relatives to ancient human relatives. Both fossils and DNA show that our two species shared a common ancestor before the Neanderthal and modern human lineages separated at least 500,000 years ago. But new evidence of a strange species could offer a closer link to humans, one that might make your head spin. Researchers working at the Center for Human Evolution Research at the Natural History Museum in London were studying a particularly interesting skull, one that's the largest homo skull on record. What did they find? The cranium might be the closest known related species to Homo sapiens, but what might really shock you is the nickname for the species, Dragon Man. The skull was discovered in China in 1933 by a man who decided to keep it a secret. He hid it in an abandoned well, which was how the Chinese traditionally buried important treasures. It wasn't until 85 years later that the secret came out when the man was dying. He told his family about the strange discovery he'd found. When experts finally got their hands on the skull, they were immediately fascinated. The head was huge, much larger than any other skull they'd previously found, which indicated the brain was just as large. The brow, face, nose, and jaws were also large, as were the eyes. But the face, while broad, had delicate cheekbones and tucked under the brain case, the same way modern humans look. In studying the skull, researchers looked at 600 different traits. By comparing them to Homo sapiens, they concluded this new group of early humans shared a more recent ancestor to Homo sapiens than Neanderthals. Using deep analysis, the research team analyzed samples from the skull and dirt in the nasal cavity to determine the skull came from an individual that lived 146,000 years ago in the Pleistocene Epoch. Wondering why researchers call the skull Dragon Man? It was found in Heilongjiang province, which, when translated, means Black Dragon River. It's easy to see how the nickname Dragon Man stuck, but don't let your imagination run away with you. The nickname doesn't mean modern humans are descended from dragons. Number 3. 
the Chelekula or Skull Tower. Many ancient cultures adopted some pretty strange practices to scare away their foes. From the Aztec death whistle that was used to summon spirits and create horror and fear, to various cultures that would put the heads of their enemies on spikes to show off their strength, these strange displays are sometimes shocking. But leave it to the ancient Turks to go one step further by building an entire tower of skulls to scare away anyone who might want to raid their camps. In 1809, the Turkish general Hursi Pasa created the Çelekula, or Skull Tower, out of the heads of defeated Serbian rebels. At the time, the two empires were at war, with the Serbs outnumbered when Turkish Imperial Guards attacked. When the Serbian commander saw the dire conditions, he got desperate and fired a shot at a fully loaded keg of gunpowder in an attempt to wipe out the enemy soldiers. He was successful, but he also ended up killing his entire army at the same time. Angry that his enemies had taken out his troops, Turkish commander Passa decided to teach the Serbs a lesson. His men mutilated the bodies of the dead rebels by peeling off their skin, decapitating them, stuffing them with straw, and sending the bodies to the imperial court in Istanbul to boast about their victory. But that wasn't all. Using the skulls as building blocks, he created a tower near the main road into the city to warn the locals of what would happen to them if they ever tried to fight the Turks again. An astonishing 952 skulls were used to build the tower, but it was all for nothing. The Serbs rebelled again in 1815 and drove away the Turks to gain their independence. And some of the family members of those who died in the fight decided to chisel away some of the skulls so they could give their loved ones a proper funeral. Only 58 skulls remain in the tower today, offering a glimpse into the tensions that once fueled such a gruesome act. Number 2. Midnight Terror Cave one day in the Cayo district of West Belize, a local farmer heard screaming coming from deep inside a cave. When the farmer rushed to the scene to help, he made a shocking discovery. 18 meters at the bottom of the cave, there were hundreds of smashed bones and teeth, so many that he couldn't even count them all. Expert bioarchaeologists were brought in to carefully analyze the remains, and when they did, they found almost 10,000 bones, teeth, and bone fragments that all belonged to individuals no more than 14 years old. Radiocarbon dating on the bones indicated the bodies were dumped in the remote cave around 3,000 years ago over a period of about 1,500 years. The task is an impossible one for researchers who estimate there were a total of 114 bodies in what is now known as the Midnight Terror Cave. The discovery was so shocking because for the most part, the ancient Maya only sacrificed adults. In fact, this was only the second time a large-scale child sacrifice has ever been found in the land of the ancient Maya. The other incident was uncovered in a subterranean cave at Mexico's Chichen Itza, where the remains of 101 children and teens were found. Another chilling discovery made after analyzing the remains is that none of the children or teens was from the local area. That means they were all rounded up from far off places and brought there specifically to be sacrificed. Could it be a matter of ancient human trafficking? And why dump them there? It's no secret that the ancient Maya saw underground streams or cenotes as sacred places. And with droughts often stretching for almost 20 years in the region, the ancient Maya might have been so desperate for rainfall, they thought sacrificing the children would please their gods enough to bring them much-needed rain. Whatever the reason, it was a chilling discovery, one that shows how ancient cultures relied upon the elements. In the Mayans' case, their desperation led to two very startling discoveries. Number 1. Mummy with Smallpox Could a deadly disease long forgotten be making a comeback? A team of experts analyzing the mummy of a child that died in the 17th century have uncovered traces of smallpox, a deadly virus that ravaged ancient Egypt 3,000 years ago. While studying the viral DNA extracted from the 17th century child, researchers revealed that the deadliest form of the smallpox virus emerged in humans around the time migrants flocked to the New World. The discovery was an accident. After spotting strange scars on the face of a child mummy found in the crypt of the Dominican church with the Holy Spirit of Vilnius, 
Researchers decided to take some samples in hopes of uncovering an obscure virus. They sent the sample to a lab in Canada. The results were completely unexpected. The sample was rich in variola, the virus that causes smallpox, which was eradicated in 1980. Most patients recovered from the infection, but up to 30% of those who contracted the disease died. By comparing the strain found in the child mummy to other samples on record, researchers found that the ancient infection was closely related to modern strains of smallpox. Even more interesting is that all 49 modern strains of virus could be traced back to a common ancestor that started between 1520 and 1654 CE, only 100 years before the child mummy lived. The team is still trying to figure out if this strain came from an animal host or if there was a mutation already present in humans that made it more deadly. The only way to find out if the virus was around even before the 17th century is to study more mummies to see if the virus could still be lurking and waiting to make a return. Number 8 Alien Discs in China Our first story really is something out of a sci-fi movie. In fact, for many experts and commentators, it's just that. A fictional account of a shocking archaeological discovery in China. No evidence exists concerning these strange artifacts known as the Dropa Stones. But to this day, the ancient mystery endures. It all started in 1938, when a cave network was found by an archaeologist. Inside the caves, which appeared to have been specifically dug, were the remains of non-human life forms. Their skeletons may have been three feet tall, and they reportedly had noticeably large heads. So far, so little green men. But it was the discs that lay with them which generated the most intrigue. Numbering over 700 and dating back to around 10,000 BC, the Dropa Stones were discs measuring a foot in width and featuring a hole in the middle. Now if that sounds like a vinyl record to you, guess what? The discs also had grooves which at one point were placed onto a record player. When the needle went down, energy was reportedly released. Within the grooves were symbols telling the supposed alien story. Apparently they weren't welcomed by humans at the time and murdered. The reason we in the worldwide community don't have the Dropa Stones to examine for ourselves is that China put them under lock and key. Though at one stage, Russia took a look and concluded they were made from a combination of cobalt, iron, and nickel. It's a powerful mystery, we're sure you'll agree, and certainly unexplained. However, the unexplained part can be boiled down to the fact that it isn't very convincing on the evidence front. People with first-hand experience of the stones don't apparently exist, or maybe all record of them was erased by the aliens. Ooh, freaky. Number 7. Rongo Rongo Writings From a vague ancient mystery to a more realistic one, the Rongo Rongo Writings of Rapa Nui, i.e. Easter Island, most definitely exist because we've actually seen them, which is a good start. We don't know a lot about this writing system, which can be found on tablets and also displayed on a wooden fish in the island's museum. There's more than one idea as to how Rongo Rongo got started, making things even more mysterious. Let's start by taking a look at the language itself, containing both human and animal shapes combined with other less understandable symbols. It represents the communications of a people whose habitation of the island was largely destroyed. When others discovered the remote beauty of Rapa Nui, they also brought with them new diseases and a desire to conquer and enslave. This meant that the population's sacred religious traditions were pushed aside. The giant stone heads, such a famous image worldwide, are a major indicator of a culture that is on the whole lost. As the 20th century dawned, a few people remained to tell their story. While the remembrances were recorded by some, it's only a small fraction of the culture left behind. New Zealand linguist Stephen Roger Fisher wrote a book on the subject. He believes the Rongorongo writings can be viewed through the prism of East Polynesia and its oral traditions. It's thought the first people to inhabit Rapa Nui came from that area. He refers to cosmogonies, which are origin stories of the universe and our natural world. Fisher believes the surviving examples of Rongo Rongo are part of this tradition. Furthermore, he theorizes that the symbols or glyphs are only part of the reading process. 
with long-established chants, possibly providing more detail. It's a disputed view of Rongo Rongo, but nevertheless a fascinating one. Ultimately, the story is so elusive because we don't even know when Rapa Nui welcomed its first inhabitants. Did they land there as early as the year 800? And if they did, did they bring their writing system with them? Or might that have come later, in response to later explorers and their own forms of communication? How will the mystery of Rongo Rongo be cracked? Artificial intelligence is being applied to the conundrum, but it's thought even modern technology will be stumped. It doesn't help that the original examples of Rongo Rongo were taken off the island, or they were created, of course. Number 6. Costa Rican Spheres an extinct people called the Diquis lived in the Central American country of Costa Rica between AD 700 and 1530. While they had a great culture at the time, many hundreds of years have passed. This means we have to rely on the archaeological evidence they left behind, some of which is maybe a little on the strange side, at least through our eyes. These are petrospheres, or stone that has been hammered into a spherical shape before being smooth. Phew. It makes us tired just thinking about it. Numbering over 300, they can be found on Caño Island in an area known as Diquis Delta. They were discovered, or rather they came to light after years of neglect by workers for a banana plantation, made from a type of rock called gabbro. The balls measure from just a foot to 6.6 .6 feet in width. It's noted that they appear to have been placed in areas that were significant to the Diquis. Apart from that, the jury is very much out on what purpose they served. Were they intended to suggest status or did they just look cool? An interesting detail is that in accounts from the 16th century, explorers didn't mention seeing stone balls in the territory. You'd think that kind of thing might get their attention, right? We only have a vague idea of when the petrospheres were made and when they were arranged. Experts trace the first spheres back to the year 600 or thereabouts. Throw in the fact that many of the spheres have been moved and that makes things even more puzzling. Whatever the story, we think you'll agree that they make for a beautiful sight, with a lot of work going into their creation. Mysterious, yet awe-inspiring. Number 5. The Emerald Tablet Remember how we talked about alien discs at the start of this video and how there was no physical evidence to back up claims concerning these mysterious items? Well, our next choice arguably puts that story in the shade. Was there really a green emerald tablet bearing symbols and inscriptions that, once understood, could transform humankind's understanding of life, the universe, and everything? Sounds like a fanciful concept, though the amount of famous names and places that are associated with the tablet, which is also referred to as the Smaragdon Tablet, is mind-boggling. By the way, Smaragdon is a word relating to all things emerald. It isn't the name of some wizard, though it certainly sounds like it, right? When it comes to the all-knowing emerald tablet, there are definitely more questions than answers. In fact, you might say it's all questions, making it one of history's ultimate mysteries. What was on this powerful and revealing hunk of emerald? Was there more than one? We're thinking if it revealed secrets of the universe, then you're not going to fit all of that on one tablet. One idea is that the tablet was created in the 5th century by the ancient Greek philosopher slash god figure Hermes Trismegistus. He was a pivotal figure in the field of alchemy, or turning matter into other stuff, such as metal into gold. However, it's also believed that he's an ancient legend from the time of the gods who never actually existed himself. So you can get bogged down trying to establish who the author was in the first place. Some think the Emerald Tablet was made in Greece, others Egypt. Atlantis is another possible source for this amazing artifact. As well as dealing with alchemy, the tablet enlightens readers on human consciousness, the power behind everything on planet Earth, and matter transmutation, basically transformation. According to records, it was translated into Latin back in the 12th century, and various notable figures have taken a look at it, including budding alchemist and human gravity detector Sir Isaac Newton, the Philosopher's Stone, which alchemist figure is the key to gold production, and so forth, may well have an entry on the Emerald Tablet. Is the tablet partly a guide to making your very own stone? At the time of recording, we'll never know, because we don't have it to study for ourselves. Now, if you'll excuse us for a sec, this elaborate story has given us a headache. I think we might need to take a, you guessed it, tablet. Ah. Number 4. Stargate in Sri Lanka You've heard of the TV shows and movies based around the concept of the Stargate. Well, here's the real-life version, or at least a rock carving, that's said to take people to strange and unknown places. It may date back to the First Kingdom of Sri Lanka, founded in 377 BC, or it may not. No one knows when it was created. 
course, we can't vouch for this being an actual Stargate, but there are some intriguing details that just might suggest something cool and cosmic. Before we get into that, let's look at where the carving is located. You can find it in Sri Lanka, in the city of Anuradhapura, inside a huge park called Ranmasu Uyana. This translates as Golden Fish Park, but if you swim in the right direction, so to speak, you will spot this interesting feature on a rock face. As you can see, it has various symbols. The alleged rock stargate is packed with geometric detail, a series of concentric circles and rectangles with circles inside. Lines run across the carving, and there are representations of fish and other sea creatures around the outside. Meanwhile, people have also identified what they think are details such as weaponry and even an umbrella. What does it all mean? Experts and amateur detectives alike can't pin down the origin of the Stargate. Whilst the Buddhist monks of the area kept records on seemingly everything back then, this significant piece of rock isn't mentioned in their writings, which is kind of strange, right? Also, there are some seats carved into the rock opposite with the mysterious site, which is approximately six feet wide. Doesn't this suggest that you could sit there and study the Stargate, or could it just be an ancient version of a park bench? Who knows? Why are people so convinced it's a Stargate? Well, images depicted on the rock appear to be similar to those seen in other symbolic sites around the world. Though we should say nobody's managed to use these symbols to travel through the universe yet. Ultimately, it's believed the rock is a map, though whether it's of the cosmos or something else is anyone's guess. Number 3. Devil's Bible Now, this is not only ancient and unexplained, but also eerie. Believed to have been written in the 13th century, Codex Gigas, or the Devil's Bible, is billed as the biggest book produced in the Middle Ages found to date. To give you an idea of the size, it's an ice straining 8.7 inches thick and weighs 165 pounds. By the way, in case you're wondering what Codex Gigas means, it translates as, um, giant book. Okay, that clears it up. Contrary to what the title suggests, it wasn't written by the devil. It's believed to have been put together by a Benedictine monk called Herman the Recluse and spent centuries inside various monasteries. It was based at the Barom of Brotherhood between 1420 and 1594. At that point, King Rudolf II had a lend of it, which turned into a permanent loan. Well, we guess he can't say no to the king, right? During the Thirty Years' War, it went to Sweden after their army raided the city. Why does it have the satanic title? This is due to a striking full-length portrait of the Prince of Darkness wearing an ermine loincloth. It forms half of a spread with a heavenly image opposite, which appears to be a cautionary move, warning folk of the dangers of the dark side. The pages, numbering 310, are made of donkey skin vellum, making the tome even more terrifying. Did the author sell their soul so they could complete this epic book in a night? Hmm, possibly. Though another theory is it took up to three decades. What else is inside the Codex Gigas? Well, it's composed of various texts by other authors, so it's actually an omnibus. The book includes the Bible, plus first century historical works by military man Flavius Josephus, among others. If you're brave enough, you can go and check out the book yourself at the National Library of Sweden. Number 2. Lizard Overlords if you want an answer to some of history's most unexplained mysteries, you might want to consider lizard people as the cause. Yes, we're going full-on conspiracy theory for our next entry. The idea that the most powerful and influential people in our society aren't so much people at all, but reptilian overlords. They've been on the planet for thousands of years. At least, according to sports broadcaster turned New Age philosopher David Icke, he believes the lizard people, as they're dubbed by skeptics, arrive from the Alpha Draconis star system in the Northern Hemisphere. Not only are they shapeshifters, but they drink blood, making them tough to spot and also, we presume, dangerous. Although Ike was widely ridiculed for his statements on the lizard people, he isn't the first to talk about this general idea. Occultist Maurice Doriel mentioned lizard-like beings disguised as humans in a pamphlet published in the 1940s, and connections have been made to science fiction authors such as Robert E. Howard, who wrote about half-men, half-serpents, who lived underground, and could control folk with their minds. It's a handy catch-all theory to potentially explain the unexplainable throughout history. But the whole alien lizard man thing is kind of the academic equivalent of catching flies, right? Number 1. King Arthur Despite being one of the most famous names in ancient history, experts still don't know if King Arthur was a real person or not. 
What do you think? You may have thought he was actually a real king back in history, or you may have just assumed he was a fictional character from myth and legend used in movies like Monty Python and the Holy Grail and Excalibur. The fact is, no one is sure. Who was first mentioned in print within the Historia Britannum, an indigenous history of the Britons written in the year 828 or thereabouts. Nineas, a monk from Wales, is thought to have been the author. According to Nineas, 300 years earlier, Arthur and his trusty knights at the Round Table went to war with the Saxons, who were trying to invade. Was there an Arthur at this battle? It seems not, because he doesn't feature in an account written in approximately 500 AD by Gildas, a Celtic monk. You'd think the king might have gotten a shout-out here, right? Over the centuries, various authors then crystallized the idea of what King Arthur and his friends were up to. Supposedly rooted in fact, it's all too ancient to be pinned down. King Arthur will no doubt forever remain an unexplained mystery. Number 8. The Concorde's Last Flight for 20 years, the Concorde was the ultimate luxury airline for those with deep pockets. Touted as the greatest, fastest, and most remarkable aircraft ever made, the sleek jet could fly at twice the speed of sound in a blending of futuristic technology, innovation, and design. But not even its flashy undercarriage lights, in-flight treatment fit for royalty, and thunderous landings that provided a sonic boom were enough to prevent a disaster. In July 2000, an Air France Concorde suffered a devastating tragedy when it caught fire during takeoff in Paris. After running over a tiny metal strip on the runway, the plane's tire tore and the fragments crashed into the jet's fuel tank, igniting it. Out of control, the plane crashed into an airport hotel, killing all 109 people on board and four others on the ground. Could the jet's modern design have played a part in the disaster? Lawyers for some of the family members of those killed in the incident believe French officials did not monitor the safety of the plane as well as they should have. Even though the metal part that tore the Air France plane came from a different jet, lawyers say the Concorde's fuel tanks weren't strong enough to protect them from the flying debris. Multiple reports of tires and wheel ruptures and holes piercing the fuel tanks of multiple jets in the Concorde fleet over the years were cited in the lawsuit. The accident was a tragedy, but it came shockingly shockingly close to being much worse. French President Jacques Chirac was on board an Air France flight that was narrowly missed by the Concorde as it crashed. After the incident, both British Airways and Air France, who collaborated to create the Concorde, grounded all flights for a full investigation. The shutdown didn't last long. Only a few days later, flights began again until the Civil Aviation Authority seized all operations at the Concorde to conduct a full safety review. Some passengers on a flight from New York were even sent back to the terminal just before takeoff when the fleet was grounded. Number 7. Saba Picture this. You're booked on a vacation to the Caribbean. Your bathing suit and sunscreen are packed into your carry-on, and you're gazing out the airplane window, ready to land at your island destination. That's when you see it. A 1,300-foot-long airport runway built on the only flat piece of land in the Antilles. With only 900 feet of usable space, the runway isn't much longer than the airplane you're riding in. If that wasn't enough to make you cringe, there are sheer drops into the sea at either end, making it the shortest commercial runway in the world and the only place to land. The island is located just 15 minutes from St. Martin, a popular destination for those looking to get away from the daily grind. The tide pool flats and mounted scenery make it a hub of activity if you can just get over the treacherous landing at the airport. But don't think you'll be heading there in some lavish luxury airliner with champagne and caviar. Only a special type of airplane can go there, one known as an STOL or short takeoff and landing utility aircraft that is used for landing strips that are very short when the plane needs to come to a stop quickly. Have you ever traveled to Saba Island and experienced this white knuckle landing? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. It only takes about 15 minutes to fly there from St. Martin, with its lush green mountains, sprawling golden beaches, and gorgeous turquoise waters creating a scenic departure. That doesn't make the journey any less terrifying once you get ready to land. Pilots even joke about how close their wings come to the stunning mountain slides on their final approach, and knowing that sometimes the planes experience engine failure from having to stop so quickly on the downward sloping runway, you might want to enjoy a little something from the airport midi bar before you hop on a flight to the remote island. 
Number 6. Lee India If you want to talk breathtaking views, hop on a flight to Lee India. It's known as one of the most scenic flight paths in the world, thanks to its position between the Himalayan mountains. And it's that location that makes landing there such a chore. Biting harsh winds lash the terrain, which means flights can only take off during a narrow window in the morning hours. Pilots who operate in and out of the airport have to undergo strict training to learn how to fly in the unsafe conditions there. They're put through grueling exercises where they fly with only one of the plane's two engines operational as a way to get them used to engine failure which often happens due to the harsh conditions. The airport is situated in the Indian site of Ladakh at the highest altitude in the world at a height of 3,256 meters above sea level. And it hasn't always been smooth flying there. A few years ago, before one flight could take off from the airport on its way to Delhi, a dog ran into the runway, forcing the plane to abort its flight. Days earlier, another flight at the airport had engine trouble and had to be grounded by civil aviators. Number 5. Scorpion on board Wonder why customs officials scan your carry-on luggage so closely? Maybe they're taking a cue from a terrifying incident that happened on an Alaska Airlines flight where an unwanted stowaway made the flight a living hell for passengers. Everyone had settled into their seats as the plane prepared to take off from Los Angeles to Portland. As the airplane was taxiing to the runway, something happened that caught everyone completely off guard. When passengers started calling for help, the plane's flight attendants scrambled to see what had happened. They found a group of passengers around a woman in distress who had suffered an unexpected injury. A scorpion that had hitched a ride on the plane's previous flight from Mexico had stung her. Even after suffering a sting on her arm, the passenger didn't complain much. In fact, everyone was shocked at how calm she was. As it turns out, the scorpion is believed to have hitched a ride in the carry-on luggage of a passenger from the previous flight. Luckily, one of the flight attendants was able to kill the scorpion without getting injured, and the plane continued on its way. For those on board, one can only imagine it was a nervous flight when the plane took off half an hour after the incident. Even with news that the entire airline would have an exterminator inspect the plane when it landed, you can bet the cabin crew were busy with drink orders to calm the nerves of the passengers. Number 4. Cristiano Ronaldo International Airport The Cristiano Ronaldo International Airport might be the gateway to the stunning sunny hotspot of Madeira, Portugal, but it's also one of the most dangerous airports to land at. The archipelago, or group of islands, in the North Atlantic Ocean boasts stunning cliffs and idyllic beaches, with Madeira the most populous and densely populated of the group. The location of the island, though, could be the very thing that makes it so treacherous to land at. Harsh winds lash the site, situated 400 kilometers north of the Canary Islands and 520 kilometers west of Morocco. Over 3 million passengers a year travel to the remote location. They have to endure a harrowing journey that sees them travel through multiple different climate systems that create dangerous crosswinds. Pilots who fly into the location have to endure extra training which often comes in handy, as weather at the mountainous location can be unpredictable at best. They've also become accustomed to diverting their planes to the nearby Canary Islands when things get too rough. Since it opened in 1964, there have been a few notable accidents. In 1977, a Boeing 727 overshot the runway and crashed into a nearby beach, killing 131 of the 164 occupants. After the incident, airport officials extended the runway in hopes of preventing future accidents. But that's another concern for anyone flying there, because the island is so small, the runway needed a concrete extension platform that juts out into the Atlantic Ocean. This, along with the special training needed to deal with known dangers during approaches, landing, or takeoff, have earned the airport the distinction as the History Channel's ninth most dangerous airport in the world and the third most dangerous in Europe. Number 3. Hot Landing Air traffic controllers were in for a devastating first-hand look at a dramatic landing when a Russian plane burst into flames upon returning to the airport for supposed technical reasons. Just after takeoff, the jet, with 73 passengers and five crew members, experienced some sort of malfunction. Desperate to save everyone, the pilot tried to get in touch with air traffic controllers, but the connection was lost. 
After sending several distress signals and receiving no response, the pilot had to make a quick decision if he was going to save everyone. With two full tanks of fuel, it was a risky move. He had no other choice but to circle the airport and touch down for a very bumpy landing, which resulted in the plane bursting into flames. But could there be some other reason for the shocking accident? Some say the plane was struck by lightning and it caught on fire mid-air. That's why it had to return. Black smoke billowed from the burning plane as it came to a stop on the tarmac. During the incident, a flight attendant was killed and two children also died. Luckily, after deploying the emergency slides, passengers were able to escape the burning wreckage. 37 passengers and crew survived the ordeal, a miracle to those who witnessed the event. After the fire crews were able to extinguish the blaze, the only thing left was the burned out shell of the plane. Stun survivors shared that the crew did everything they could to save everyone on board. They also confirmed that just after takeoff, the plane was indeed struck by lightning, which may be what caused the pilot to lose contact with the radio tower. Footage of the incident quickly started to circulate after passengers on another plane waiting to take off witnessed the incident and started filming. Number 2. Lukla Airport, Nepal If you thought trying to climb Mount Everest was dangerous, you'd have to get there first. And from the sound of it, that's no easy feat. At 9,383 feet above sea level, Lukla Airport is the only way into the region. Unless you want to hike in by foot through the rocky, snowy terrain and risk injury before you even get there. The tiny settlement sees multiple flights a day, and even though the journey from Kathmandu to Lukla is only 30 minutes, you'll feel like you're traveling to a totally different world. The problem is the high altitude of the location. Low air pressure offers challenges and dangers that you won't encounter at other locations. But travelers have no choice if they want to make the trek to the top of Earth's highest mountain above sea level. Steep mountains surround the airport on all sides and the runway seems like it was simply placed there on a small shelf. With a wall at one end and a steep drop into the valley below at the other, you'll either hold your breath or close your eyes when you make this approach. With lower air density than at sea level, airplanes struggle to generate enough power to fly. The reduced air resistance also makes it harder for pilots to slow their planes down, so longer runways are a plus. Unfortunately, the one at Lukla is only 1,729 feet long, incredibly short when compared to most other runways and international airports that are usually 10,000 feet long. That means the runway had to be constructed with an uphill gradient to help the plane stop easier. Once aircraft make their approach, there's no way to turn back because of the tight squeeze between the surrounding mountains. This also means that only fixed-wing propeller planes and helicopters are allowed to land there. Another factor that makes Lukla so dangerous is the unpredictable weather. Number 1. Barra Airport, Scotland If you thought jagged mountains, blinding snowstorms, and high winds were dangerous for potential pilots, take a look at Barra Airport in Scotland's Outer Hebrides. Located in the North Atlantic with less than 1,200 inhabitants, Barra is a stunning island with a scenic flight overlooking the lush landscape from Glasgow along the River Clyde, over Loch Awe, the Isle of Mull, and across the sea. Once you start your approach, though, you might be in for a big surprise. If you happen to look out the window over the choppy seas and across the dark hills ahead, you might start to panic when you realize the runway you're supposed to land on has mysteriously disappeared. Just 8 miles long and 5 miles wide, Barra is a tiny village with a butcher, post office, cafe, and a few houses near the port where the ferry bypasses the grassy sand dunes to come to rest in the bay, with no concrete or tarmac here to land on. Barra is the only airport in the world where flights land on a beach. Arrivals are timed according to the tide, so if you happen to be making your approach when the tide is in, you might not have a place to land. If the weather is really bad, pilots will make a few attempts to land, but more often than not, they end up having to divert back to Glasgow to try landing another day. And don't think that just because you landed safely, you'll make it out as easily. Thanks for watching. Which one of these flights did you think was the craziest? Let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these. See you next time. Bye!